Hey, surprise! I really hope that I am in Road to Executive right now because you guys all know my fear of going live on my personal page or in Boss Nail Babes, which I have done repeatedly on accident. Okay, good. I'm live in, in um, Road to Exec. Okay, so uh, um, Chelsea and Chandra were asking a really great question. This gets asked so commonly, even by leaders, even at my level, I have struggled with this. So I want to talk about some options to the question, how do I motivate my people? How do I motivate a team that is unmotivated? My people are in my chat, they're not participating. What do I do to get them motivated? What do I do to get them motivated? Okay, so I have a few points I wanna to touch on with this, all right? So listen up, listen up. One, if you struggle with a team that is not all motivated, that's normal. You're never, ever gonna have a team that's all motivated, okay? Here's the thing. We don't work at Google. Okay. We don't work at Microsoft. We don't work at Tesla. Okay. If we did, everyone that came in our door would be freaking well overqualified. They'd have leadership experience. They would have 20 years on professional experience. They would be your runners. Everyone on your team would be an effing rock star. Your retention would be 90%. Okay. Because you would vet people and people on your team would all be motivated because they are begging to be there. There's a line out the door to get there. In direct sales, you guys, it's not like that. Anyone can sign up to do direct sales. Any, you know, oh, kit stealer, oh, it's too hard, I don't wanna work. Anybody can do this. So you cannot expect everyone on your team to be motivated, okay? Just get it in your, you're not a failure. It's not a reflection of you. Get it, do not expect everyone to be motivated. So one, get that out the window, all right? What can you do? Well, you also need to realize that you can do a lot of things. You can create, and we'll talk about creating team culture, making it a safe place for people to engage, building relationships, connections, knowing people's love languages and, and the way you communicate. But also remember, you can't motivate anyone. You can be motivational, you can be inspirational, you should be modeling for people, you should be running your own personal business and showing them what they should be doing. You should be leading by example. You cannot put motivation into someone that doesn't exist. So ideally what I'm looking for and why I love to flip my hosts is that I'm looking for a host that is, uh, that is doing the things. She already has customers. She is great, okay? And I'm looking for motivation innately in people. And that, those are the people that I like to enroll. Those are the people that I will go after for nine months. Those are the Mikkels of the world. I see it in them. I don't care how long, how many times I have to revisit or plant that seed. I want her on my team, okay? I can see drive and determination a mile away. You guys all know who they are. You all know who they are. So you cannot, thank you, April, I just got them done. In fact, they're kind of peeling right now. There's a, a microblading process where the tattoo starts peeling and it's getting crusty. Um, so remember that you can't put motivation into anybody. It's there or it's not. Now you can encourage when people get discouraged, you can coach, you can mentor, you can guide. You guys are looking for your runners, okay? I love looking for people that are doing the things that we're talking about, they're participating. Those are the people you give your time to. Those are the people you work with, the people that are in it to win it, okay? So just get it off your chest now. You cannot motivate everybody. You're gonna get people that fall off your team. Do you know how many people fall off my team each month? A lot. If I enroll four or five people a month, really only one of them is going to be motivated enough to work this business. Do the math there. One out of four or five that I enroll really only are gonna account to much, okay? So if a South really can only get one out of five people to be motivated, understand that these are the numbers that we're dealing with in direct sales. This is, the, this is a part of the business, all right? But those one and five are worth it, I promise you. Those one and five are you. My road to executive people, you belong here. You are the one and five. Even if I didn't personally enroll you, you're a one and fiver, okay? Second, what can you do to get more engagement and participation? You need to create a team culture, okay? Stop relying on Boss Nail Babes or me or your upline to, to be the leader. You need to lead. What do you do that creates a team culture? Do you have a team name? Do you send out team welcome gifts to people? Do you send out letters to them? Do you do Zoom team fun things? Do you do anything fun at all for your team? Think about the things that we have tried to build in Boss Nail Babes. To me, Boss Nail Babes feels like a family, it feels like a culture. We are very different than every other team. We have Christmas Zoom parties. We do, we have a book club, we have all, we have sweat. Like I'm not saying you have to go and make your own sweatshirts, but I'm saying that you need to create a place that 
it has boundaries. Okay, a family and a team has boundaries. Like people don't just get to go in there and be all willy nilly, but it feels safe. It feels like community. So you need to find a way to make it a community place. That includes not just speaking at people, asking questions, tagging them, asking people for their opinions, um, sharing ideas. It includes doing things outside of a group chat. So maybe it's, you know, being on each other's personal pages, knowing about their kids. Um, but you need, and my favorite book for this is called The Culture Code by Daniel Coyle. It was Kayla's very first book club book that she covered in Boss Nail Babes. You need to read it and you need to begin working on creating your own culture with your own team. Okay. Um, praise and recognition are huge, you guys. I'm not just talking about the one thread in Boss Nail Babes where if they BQ at the beginning of the month, what you praise and recognize will be repeated. Okay. So if you see someone doing something great, you praise the hell out of them and you meet them where they're at. Not everybody is going to hit circle of excellence. I'm not, you can't only praise circle of excellence people. If you have somebody that struggles, like maybe she's terrified of going live and she went live in her group, but maybe it totally sucked. You praise the hell out of her in that in with your safe culture, you screenshot it and you're like, Oh my God, sister, like, I can't believe you did this. Everybody let's cheer for you. Whatever you praise what you want them to continue doing. All right. Praise the hell out of them. Positive reinforcement works. And it does not have to be on the one thread in Boss Nail Babes. You should be doing this all the time. Send them a private personal message. Hey, I'm, I just want to tell you I'm so proud of you. I know that you struggle to do A, B, C, and D. And I see you making incredible improvement. Like, I see you, girl. I see you. And I am so proud. Those words mean a lot. They mean a lot. People will continue to do them if you recognize it, if you praise them. I love giving praise for big accomplishments on people's personal pages or in their VIP group. Screw boss nail babes. That's all a bunch of other stylists that let their friends and family see what they've accomplished. Talk about how they hit that jump start. whatever, post that to their personal page or in their VIP space. That's going to mean a lot more. Okay. So what you recognize and what you praise will be repeated. Praise is huge. Praise is huge. Um, get involvement in my, I have what's called a newbie chat. Um, where I train my brand new stylist and usually their first 45 days. Um, I don't allow any silent sleepers. If I'm wanting to talk about a topic and I want input from everyone, I'm asking them. If I have a group chat and I'm talking about like, okay, how do we book parties? Let's, let's round table. I'm not saying this is how we book parties. One, two, three. I'm saying, hey ladies, shoot me your ideas. Like, how did you book your last party? Let's, let's talk. Let's, you know, let's mastermind this together. And the same two people, you guys probably have it too, the same two people are inputting, the same two people read the messages. Oh, I'm tagging. I'm, t I'm tagging the hell out of them. Hey, Sally, what do you think? Hey, Sally, I know you're really great at this. I find what they're good at and I ask them. The more people feel valued and important and a part of a safe team culture, the more they will participate. Now, again, you're always going to have the rando that just doesn't do anything. She probably has a group on silent. But this is why you need boundaries because if people are working a nine to five job and y'all are in there not talking about work and you're in and people are in there asking stupid ass questions that they could Google, you're going to get people that check out of the group too. So it's like this balance, this balance of for, just like parenting for those of you that have kids, firm boundaries, discipline, um, schedule, routine, safe culture, learning environment, participation. So you need to find what works for your group. I know personally, I will check out of any group that's like, oh my God, here's my dog. Oh, well, like, where do I find this graphic? What do you mean? What's a party? Like, no, mm -mm, no. But I want people to be like, hey, I tried this. Does, has anybody ever had this experience happen to them? Um, you know, what is your favorite training on booking parties? You know, but, what, those types of things. So I will tag and specifically reach out to people to engage because I want their opinion if they're not participating. Also, you need to know what your people's love language is, okay? Not everyone responds to gifts. Not everybody's a gift person. Maybe they're an acts of service person. Maybe they're like, hey, how can I help you? You know, do you want me to, you know, whatever, send you a training on using post my party? What do you need from me? Um, maybe people are verbal. Um, I know Danette is a verbal person. Like she, she appreciates words, um, you know, she, that's that's her communication style. Um, also acts of service, but that bitch don't need me to do anything for her. She does it all herself. But a lot of people have different love languages. Maybe um, sending them just a handwritten card saying that you appreciate them and you're so happy they're on your team. 
would mean the world to them. Maybe it would make the difference of them BQing that month or not. Maybe it would mean the difference of them participating and feeling valued or not, okay? Um, what is their love language? You, If you're only speaking in your love language, that ain't gonna work for them, okay? And so you need to meet them where they are and you need to try different things to make someone feel valued and appreciated. And you can find a way to value or appreciate somebody for anything, for anything, not just the high achievers. So I do this a lot with my new stylist. We do fun, I get ways to engage them. I do little fun challenges, not just incentives. No, incentive, like not everybody's motivated by an incentive. Sometimes they feel like they don't wanna try for incentive because they're not gonna hit it. So I do fun little challenges where everybody can participate and everybody can win. Like reach out and ask 10 people to host a party with you, screenshot it, share it here. I'm gonna give you a free set of nails. Anybody can ask 10 people. It's not based on performance. It's not based on them booking a party. It's based on them trying. Hey, I, I also do for my new stylist. Once they can screenshot and show me they've, read, they've watched all the trainings, I send them a free set of nails. Yay, we celebrate them. Yay, you're a rock star. Little things add up where they feel accomplished and they feel like they've done something and they feel like they're being recognized and they these th make all the difference. And then we do fun little challenges where they have to interact with each other. Talk about team culture. I make all my new stylists add into one another's groups and we have a rule. If you see another stylist going live, you damn well better jump on and give them um, engagement. I wanna see comments and I wanna see gifts. No hearts, no likes. And I want them to do that the same for your group. If you put on a new set of nails, I want you to post it to a couple other new stylist pages and act like you're a happy customer. And in turn, they will do it for you. You know how much that helps your business? Um, so I, my, new, my new stylist chat group is like a family and people feel safe and they learn to um, trust each other and engage with each other and help each other on their pages. So even after they leave my new stylist training group, I see these people, I have some stylists that are directors and senior directors now and they still do this on those people that they were new stylists with on their pages. And it's a culture that we created and it's a, lo it's a loving environment. So um, encourage engagement, meet them where they're at, find out what their love and communication style is. Um, you're not gonna motivate everybody, you guys realize that. It's not your job to be, the, to be everything to everyone. And then really, um, you're gonna find out who the people are that are motivated. I call them like your runners. You, you give them your extra time. This is where people falter. You're so busy trying to get that girl that's at $37 each month to be something when you should be spending your time with the girl that's kicking ass. She is your leadership capable person. She is your road to executive person. Those are the people that get your extra time. My extra time goes to people like you. My extra time does not go to the people that, really, are they ever gonna be motivated? Are they ever gonna sell more than $47? Probably not, probably not. Past shows that she's probably not gonna engage much. So I do big things in the group to help motivate and encourage and incentivize, but I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring and really digging deep with the people that show me that they want this. Okay, so I don't, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the 80-20 rule, but it applies to everything in life. Okay, so 80% of your group volume, your income, your money is gonna come from 20% of the people on your team. Think about that. 80% of your income comes from 20 of the people. For me, and, and really, so that means that 80% of my people are really, make, they make up like no, no income of my team. So why am I gonna be focusing on all these people that aren't doing anything when I really only need to help and love on a small percentage of people that are gonna grow my team exponentially. My leaders make up a small amount, but they are the huge majority of the growth, the recruitment, the volume, the group volume, everything on my team. They're the ones that are hosting parties, so they get my love and attention. So don't stop focusing on the people so much that aren't doing the things and aren't participating. That's normal. You love on and you nourish and you help the people that want this. And in the meantime, you just create a group culture that's safe so that anyone feels like it's it's their place and it's their people to do that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Any questions? I know I have, an, I have another coaching call in five minutes. Again, with Heather Norton, who does all the things and is always there. And like, I didn't even enroll her, but she has earned my time. She has earned, like special people, if they're a great leader and they're doing things, like they get one-on-one -on -one time with me because they're doing the things that they need to be doing. Um, other people can get me in Boss Nail Babes and they got my newbie chat if they enroll with me, but they don't, they haven't earned that one-on-one -on -one time with me. Um, so definitely, you guys, there's a lot that you can be doing with your teams, 
but you're not failing if everybody's not motivated. But you can encourage participation, you can create a group culture, and you can have fun. At the end of the day, this is supposed to be fun. Remember, fun. So do things that aren't based on performance. People are intimidated to participate in those. Um, yeah, instead, you know, I like to do a couple PV pushes because I do want my, my, I do want to increase my personal volume, but try to do things that are just based on reach outs, you know? Hey, I want you to start five conversations with randoms today. Screenshot it, share it here in the group. You win this. You're entered to win this. You want to teach good habits and make it fun and let your group have fun. So any other questions before I jump off? Okay, I'm so glad you guys are liking this. I wasn't sure if it would help anybody. Okay. Oh, lastly, delegate. If you have people that are motivated, it is not all on you, all right? I have some great leaders and they help me tremendously. Your your team space should not be all on you. Do you, do you see only me talking in Boston Babes all the time? Hell no. We have Haley doing Motivational Monday. Shit, if anybody's good at policy or anything else, I'm looking for somebody to do like Tip Tuesday every month, a tip for a business tip each month. I'm looking for somebody to do policy, I don't know, policy Wednesday, wacky rule Wednesday, I don't know. But I am always looking for people that are capable and want to help participate and have them lead with you, okay? It's not all on you. Use your leaders in your group and use their strengths to your advantage. Let them lead, teach them, show them how to lead. Let them gain their confidence with you. It's gonna help your team tremendously because not everybody can relate to you. I'm not the most relatable person, I get it. Sometimes people look at me and they're like, yeah, I can never be that. I can't work at her level. But I have other people that are very relatable. A lot of people relate to Danette. A lot of people relate to Haley. I'm aware that I am not the most um, empathetic, emotional person. So hell yes, I have nurturers on my team. Hell yes, I have Kayla Springs and other people that are lovers and doing the things that I am not doing. So um, use your people in your group to your advantage as well. Last tip, sorry. All right, y'all, I'm gonna jump off. Have a great day.